What is up, Life Fighters? Welcome back to the channel. This is Life Fighters Anonymous. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I have something very special for you. My buddy Dave is here. Say hi, Dave. Hello. Hello. And he is a radio nerd, and we are setting up a very special antenna. So let's go over to Dave over here. Hello, Dave. Well, hello. What do we got today <laughs> for him? Uh, this is the L3 Harris RF 1936 crossed dipole near vertical incident skyway antenna. How much magic does this thing put out? Well, I believe if you bought one from L3 Harris, thousands of dollars worth of magic. Thousands of dollars worth of magic. We're about yeah. to demonstrate thousands of what thousands of dollars worth of magic will get you in HF antennas, correct? This is another HF antenna? This is an HF antenna um, that I have modified a little bit. So the setup for it is going to be slightly different than if you have a, if you have one issued to you in the military. People carry this thing? Yes. This is too big. All right, take us through this cool little bag here. It looks like it's got everything you need it, like most military. Like most military things, it's gonna give you instructions written for a disgruntled, malnourished 19 year old. All right. So you should be. So I should be. You a, should be okay here. They got pictures for yeah, me. Yeah, there's pictures. I like pictures. So just ignore the words. We can just go off pictures. Um, essentially what you're gonna get with this antenna whenever you first open one up, depending on what package you have. Um, some of these come with more uh, poles, some come with less, some are made to mount on the ground, some are made to mount on vehicles. All right, antenna, what is specifically different about this antenna than our, the antenna that you normally pack as a, as a radio operator? What's, what's, why is this one cool? Well. Besides the military uses it. it yeah, which doesn't even make it cool. It just makes it heavy <laughs> and expensive. There you go, okay. So because it's heavy and expensive, the military bought a lot of them. Right. Uh, this one is made to mount on the ground. This very beat up, bent up thing here is our ground mount that we might have to loosen up just a little bit. But uh, essentially you're just gonna pound that into the ground with stakes. And what kind of makes this antenna unique is the poles that support the antenna are also the feed line for the antenna. So with the other antenna that we set up, we had to run coax to it, yeah. to the magic box. The mast that holds our antenna up is actually the coax. So you can look down inside of it oh, cool. and see connections. Let's get that zoomed in here. And when this is fully erected. You said erected. <laughs> it's going to send our magic radio waves from our wires down our pole into the radio. So if you read the directions. So we can pound this in, so we do that now or wait? Yeah, we can do that now. Which one should If I you use? read the directions, it will tell you to find a flat place. If there's not a flat place, you should make a flat place a flat with place. your shovel, you know, or a rock or something. Is this flat enough? I'm kind of just. Oh yeah, this, right. is, this is plenty flat. So if you get one of these, however, you come about one. It could have this ground mount or it could have the mount that go on vehicles. There's a lot of different ways this is packaged. It's a little bit of an angle. I could just, there we go, now we're straight. So what we're, as I mentioned before, we still have a bunch of these safety things on it from the last time we set this up. Yep. Uh, this is the actual top section of the antenna. So once it's put together all the way, this is gonna be all the way at the top. But when you're first setting this up, if you read the directions, you just kind of temporarily set this down here so that you can run your wires out. Cool. The wires, which there's four of them, are both your radiating elements and they're also, something scared the horse. Anything and they're also the, the, uh, they're the radiating elements and they're also the guy wires. So it's these things we're about to run out uh, are acting as the antenna and the support for the antenna both. And they're very tangled up because we put this back together in the dark. Well, 
So, but the important thing about setting this up is you're going to observe that the opposing ends are the same length. And you have a short end and a long end. So whenever you're orienting this, you need to look at your surroundings and think, which way should we send the long end? Okay. So hopefully we have enough room to send the long end that this way. way. Okay. And we'll send the short end this way. Um, if this is a brand new antenna that you haven't monkeyed with like I have, what you can do is just start stringing these out and then we'll actually have markers, which is this brass connector here okay. that tell you where to stake it out. Okay. And if you stake it out there, by the time you put all your poles in, it will be the correct length automatically. We don't have this, that luxury because I have changed the length of these wires to make it work better. Okay. So what we will begin to do, which you will have to just fast yeah. forward through, is untangling this and running our wires out. I believe we had some like um, 10 year old children assisting us with this at the last event. So some things uh, ended up a little bit tangly and bent, which is fine. Hopefully it's 10 year old, 10 year old proof. It's well, if proof. children didn't want to play with this, it would just sit in my garage. <laughs> so. So this one is gonna have to go that way. The one I got here? Yep. All right. It wasn't wound back up correctly. So as, as you can see, um, some of these oppose each other. So this one needs to go like the opposite direction as that. And gotcha. The opposite, it kind of points the correct way. It comes out of a weird spot. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter as long as we don't get like 60 mile an hour winds. But since these are the guy lines as well, it likes to make a sh certain shape. Did that one go like all the way to your... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just right all the fence, but it's yeah. plenty of room. All right, if you want to keep yep. unwinding that. So as I said, if this antenna was not mutilated by me to make it better, you would now put your stakes where the brass crimped on things are on the white rope section of the antenna, which would place your stakes at the exact correct location. Because I've changed the uh, length of these wires, we will not do that. So essentially what you're going to want to happen is definitely use two people to do this, as the instructions say and you're just gonna start adding in these poles from the bottom. The most important thing is to make sure that you're pushing down and pushing up so that there's a solid connection between each pole. Okay. Because as I've stated, this is the feed line as well for the antenna, so all of these need good connection. So I'm just going to hold this up and you'll just have your magic antenna assistant put them on one at a time. Bangalore! They are kind of like Bangalores. Yeah, this is, I'd like this way more. This, this Maybe is, we can trade this for some Bangalores. Oh, yeah, don't tell the ATF. Then we just trade FCC problems for ATF problems. And this does start getting a little bit heavy. <laughs> the further up it goes. Down this one and then you're on? Yep. All right. Above you. Once you have them all up, one person is going to hold this vertically while the other person goes around and stakes out all of your ropes. Where do I stake it at? Just so that it's reasonably taut while this pole is vertical. Stick. At the very end of this line? Oh, anywhere on the rope. Just make a, uh, what's the bushcraft term? LARP's head? LARP's head? LARP? LARPer knot? LARP's head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that good? Probably, or we can adjust it. It's always easier to make it tighter because you can just wrap it around the stake some more. I just kind of did yeah. just a frictionless hitch. The laziest knot I know. 
What is up, Life Fighters? Taking out antennas or something weird. Yeah, you oh, this one's shorter. Fancy, fancy firefighter tent stake knots. <laughs> I just wrap it a lot, like a real firefighter. <laughs> just cut it off if it doesn't come back undone. Yeah. If, if it falls over, blame C shift. Oh, that's never coming out. Hopefully we can see this all. We do have our little flyers on there, so. Yeah, safety first. One line there. Other line's coming off the top of it. Down to here. Last one staked out over there. So, because the um, support pole is also the feed line, what you're going to end up doing down here at the bottom is going to be very dependent upon whether you're connecting a military radio or civilian radio. So we can talk about both. Cool. Let me get a little closer so we can see it real well. Go ahead. But you're gonna have two connections down here on the bottom. One is offset off to the side, like there's a, um, you know, an insulator or something there. That's gonna be your red connector. That's gonna be your radiating element connector. And then the black is gonna go to the side that doesn't have that offset. And that is the ground or shield side of the antenna. Now what this antenna system was initially designed for is the military's ALE system, which is like automatic link establishment, which means your radio is going to go through a whole bunch of pre-programmed frequencies, attempt to make a brief contact with other radios that are doing the same thing. And these radios are going to determine for you which frequency to use. Okay. And you're just gonna tell the radio, use the best frequency to talk to this person. And because you've already negotiated that automatic link establishment system, your radio is just going to do it. You're not even going to know what frequency you're on. So that's kind of, so because of that, when, when this comes from the factory from L3 Harris, it's made to work for a very, very broad range of frequencies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which makes it a bad antenna otherwise. Yeah. So I changed the lengths to actually work on the frequencies we want to use. Um, so I would recommend that if someone is going to use this in the United States for amateur radio frequencies, uh, take the two longest sides, the original longest sides, and shorten them for 7 megahertz, and take the short sides and lengthen them for 3 megahertz. So this antenna now, because you have a cross dipole, four sides, we have a dipole for the 40 meter band or seven megahertz and the 80 meter band or three megahertz. And those are the two bands you primarily yep. use? Okay. For this type of antenna. And uh, the military radio, the cable that comes with this is a BNC. So if your radio has a UH, UHF or um, PL259 connector, you'll just need to carry an adapter with that. And that literally just goes straight into your radio and you're ready to go. Cool. Um, what radios does this typically hook up to? Is it going to be the military style radios or, but yeah. you, but with this connector, you can hook it up to your HF man pack that you had earlier. Yeah. You can, you can connect this to any HF radio. Now it was just specifically made to work with the matching network and all of that, that goes with the, um, military radio, which you can kind of see a picture of here. Um, so L3 hair, you know, the Falcon radios. Um, I'm sure some people are using Kodan or Barrett radios, um, all of the, all of the expensive radios. Kodan or Barrett or L3 Harris. Sponsor us. If you want to send us radios, yeah. we will hook up your radio to this antenna and then never give you your radio back. So if that sounds appealing to you, you can do that. I'm more of a backpack guy, but yeah, if you want mm -hmm. to send us radios, I think those are, those are cool too. This, this whole setup will come with a bunch of other stuff like grounding straps. A grounding rod and all of that. Ooh, we can sell um, this, brother. This is copper, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Worth yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 20 bucks. Yeah, like four crack rocks is what you got right there. Oh, yeah. 
And uh, that's because the, the matching, the, the network matching system, the essentially the antenna tuner system uh, is gonna need a good ground. Um, so if you're running the military system, you're gonna have to read more instructions than what we just went over. Okay. So we've got this thing up now. We could hook up our radio to it, talk, talky talk all day. And the next step is putting it away and obviously not putting it away in a manner that is a clusterfuck for next time. Yeah. So uh, so the, the best way to do that is the exact opposite of what we just did um, in that we're gonna take out all of these sections of pole, reset down our top section down here on the bottom temporarily, and then start taking out our stakes and wires and winding them back up. Very cool. It's One still time. very much a two person operation because this thing will crash down and bonk you in the head, especially at night. It will 100% bonk you in the head. All right, so reverse order of operations kind we'll of here. Disconnect our radio and connectors. Radio connectors and stow them. All right, you want me to support or you want me to remove? Uh, you can remove. All right. So Smart. hopefully we have enough slack. We do. And we'll just start taking these out one at a time. I like the little, the thump, the little <laughs> radio we ASMR. Temporarily put our top section back down on our stand. Stow our poles, making sure there's not any dirt or debris in our connecting sections. And I imagine the next step is removing those stakes, correct? Remove the stakes, and All then right. we can wind this back up. I will up. go around and remove those for you, starting over here. All right, so it looks like you gets, went ahead and got started without me there. Any method to the madness, or you just put that away like the vacuum cleaner I, house? I mentioned to the camera while you were gone that you want to wrap these in a crossing motion. Okay. So they like cross yep. instead of just going over, over every time. Before. I think it just organizes it better. Okay. I don't have a good way to explain that other than I forgot to do it once and it caused me problems. Well, oh, you got this for the, the super deal, didn't you? The what, what? The good deal? You got a good deal on this, didn't oh. you? Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, I had, a, I had, I had oh, a, yeah. a coupon. Does this antenna come in M81? <laughs> so now your entire top section comes off and you can stow that back in your olive drab carrier. Just like that. Oh, that's good. I got nice See, soft ground back here. That's that's what happens when you don't have military grade stakes. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This was what kind of antenna is this? This is the L3 Harris RF 1936 NBIS or Near Vertical Incident Skywave antenna. Antenna. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had more fun than I did. Radios are fake and gay. Radios are fake and gay. <laughs>